In this video, we'll be discussing the concept of primitives in the context of the Qiskit ecosystem. So let's start by first discussing why do we need to learn about primitives in the first place. So in previous videos, we discussed that there are different ways to simulate quantum circuits within Qiskit. So we covered the quantum info package and the basic simulator, and then we introduce the high efficiency simulators within Qiskit Air. Now, part of the appeal of the simulators was that the way we would interface with them was almost identical to the way we would run circuits in IBM's hardware using the Qiskit IBM provider. So for example, we will create a quantum circuit that we want to run in hardware and we would define our backends for the simulators the same way we've explained before, but we could define a backend for a quantum processing unit by just using this IBM provider and getting the, the backend we wanted. In this case, it was IBM Osaka. And the way we would transpile the circuits for each of the different simulators or the hardware was exactly identical. So here we would just use the transpile function and then this would translate our circuit to the basis gates of the simulators or the hardware itself. So here we will have it for, let's say the basic simulator or our air simulator. And then in the case of the real quantum processor, it will translate it into gates that will correspond to physical pulses that would change the state of our qubits. We could then create a noise model for a simulation to compare results. And the way we would execute our circuit will be identical to the way we do it with the simulators with this dot run method, right? So I'm not going to run this here because this can take several hours, but I'm going to retrieve a job that I already executed. And the way we will get our results was exactly identical using this um, helper method of get counts, right? And then we could just compare our simulation with our real hardware results very easily. So as you can see, things match really well between the simulators and the hardware. Now, as we mentioned in previous videos, the Qiskit IBM provider has been deprecated, so we cannot use this workflow anymore. Instead, we are now being asked to migrate into the Qiskit IBM runtime method. Now, in a future video, I will explain why runtime was introduced. But what's important for this video is that to interface with IBM's quantum hardware, now we need to use this concept of primitives. So what are primitives? So the way we interface with backends is typically by providing a circuit or a list of circuits plus a single set of shots that would then be sent to the backend, like for example, the basic simulator or real hardware, and then from there, we would extract a result in the form of the number of counts for some states we've measured. But primitives serve as an abstraction between the user and the backends and are basic functional blocks that run slightly higher level quantum programs that return more than just the counts. So for example, one of the two available primitives we have is the sampler which is used to sample the output state of a circuit and could, for example, provide a set of probability distributions of our results instead of just giving us the counts. So primitives take as inputs more than just circuits. They take lists of what are known as primitive unified blocks or pubs. And a pub consists of a circuit, a set of parameters, if the circuit is parameterized, and the number of shots for that particular circuit within the list. Then this is sent to, for example, the sampler that would organize the circuits with the parameters and send that information to one of the backends we've discussed in previous videos. Then it will get the results, post-process them, and give us an output, like for example, the probability distribution of the results. Now we will see later that the latest version of the sampler doesn't really provide probability distributions, even though the original version did, but that's a separate discussion. Now, the second type of primitive is what is known as the estimator, which also takes as an input a list of pubs, but the format is slightly different. It has 
circuits, observables, which then the estimator will take with also a list of parameters and a precision, and add the additional gates needed so that we can measure those observables in the right basis. The estimator then again will interface with the backend, organizing all this list of circuits, get the results back, and then produce an output that is, for example, the expectation value of the counts that it will get from the backend. So as you can see, primitives serve as a higher level interface between user inputs and the backend to provide outputs that are more than just regular counts. Now here's where things start to get messy. In the current version of Qiskit, there are two types of primitives. In essence, they do exactly the same thing, but the format for their inputs and outputs are completely different. So first we have version one primitives, and in my opinion, I think you should don't waste your time and just don't use these at all because they will eventually be deprecated and version two primitives will just be the standard. So which are these primitives? So in the Qiskit package, these are called the sampler and the estimator. So as you can see, the version one are the ones that are treated as standard. Similarly, in Qiskit Air, they're also called sampler and estimator, but in Air, these primitives can use additional options available only in the high performance simulators. Now in the Qiskit IBM runtime package, which is what we would use to interface with IBM's quantum hardware, these are also called a sampler or estimator, but you can also instantiate them as sampler v1 or estimator v1 if you want it, but they're exactly the same. The issue here is that the options that the Qiskit IBM runtime sampler and estimator take are completely different from the ones that the sampler and estimator in Qiskit take. So let me show you an example of what I mean, because this will become relevant when we discuss the version two primitives. So let's first just create a circuit and here I'm just gonna have an empty circuit. And let's say we want to instantiate the sampler from the Qiskit package. So we do that from the primitives module and we basically create a sampler object and run that circuit through the sampler and get the probability distribution of it. And then we can just print those probabilities. And since the circuit is empty, we just get a probability of one for stays here all the time. Now let's copy this exact same code, but replace the sampler from Qiskit with the sampler from the Qiskit IBM runtime. So we do that from this separate package, but we leave everything else the same. And you would expect that because these are both samplers that this should work fine, but this gives you an error. And the reason for this is because this sampler requires a backend to be specified to it. So we could, for example, import from Qiskit Air, the air simulator, and then pass that backend to the sampler from Qiskit Runtime, and then that will run just fine. But as you can see, the two of them are very different. And the reason for that is because the sampler from the Qiskit package already has a specified backend to it. It actually uses the state vector class to run the simulation. So we can't pass a different backend to this particular one, it will give an error. Now, another problem is that this doesn't seem to work all the time. For example, if instead of the air simulator, we try to use the basic simulator, this will give an error because I believe there might be a bug in the code that um, doesn't let us use this particular backend. So for this reason, later in the Qiskit package, the backend sampler and backend estimator were introduced. So these two versions of the sampler and estimator are equivalent to the sampler and estimator from the Qiskit IBM runtime package in which we can specify which type of backend to use, unlike the sampler and estimator classes in Qiskit. Now that brings us to the version two primitives. So my recommendation is to start using this instead and not waste your time with the version one primitives. So in the Qiskit package, 
The sampler and estimator versions of this are now called the state vector sampler and state vector estimator. And that's because they use the state vector class to run the simulations. So now they have a more intuitive name to them. Now in Qiskit Air, there are no version two primitives available as of yet. But if you look at the code in the GitHub repo, there's already some work on this. So eventually those will be available. Now in the Qiskit IBM runtime package, which is the one we use to interface with IBM's quantum hardware, these are called sampler V2 and estimator V2. And they work in a similar way to the sampler V1 and estimator V1 where you need to provide a backend. Now within Qiskit, there is not a backend sampler V2 and a backend estimator V2 as of yet. But again, if you go to the Qiskit GitHub repo, you can see that these are already being implemented as well. So you would have an option to use different backends within the Qiskit package to run simulations. So this basically summarizes all the different options available. Now in the next video, what we'll do is we'll start looking into the state vector sampler and state vector estimator so we can understand the structure of the way we specify the inputs and read out the outputs of these primitives, which will be the same format used by the sampler V2 and the estimator V2 from the Qiskit IBM runtime that we will use to execute circuits in hardware.